Welcome back, everybody. Today we're uh, we're going to do a deep dive into the passing of Liam Payne. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go beyond the headlines here. You know, okay. using all the sources that we have, uh, news reports, official statements, even social media tributes, mm -hmm. um, to kind of piece together. You know, hopefully a more complete picture of what happened. Yeah, and I think that's important because you know, with social media nowadays, right. Um, things get reported so quickly mm -hmm. and the initial reports don't always give the full story. Right. And so what we're going to do is look at all these things together and hopefully get a more complete picture yeah. of what happened. So maybe we can start off with the initial reports that came out right after his death. Yeah. It seemed like the focus was on a balcony fall. Right. And I think it was even classified as a dubious death right from the start, mm -hmm. which obviously sparked a lot of questions and speculation. Yeah, for sure. And I think the preliminary autopsy too, you know, the... It showed multiple injuries and hemorrhaging, but it didn't really clarify what happened with the fall. And as all this was happening, there were a lot of tributes that were coming out from other musicians. Yeah. Um, one that stood out to me was from Justin Bieber. Uh huh. And he was talking about, you know, it's okay for fans to grieve, mm -hmm. even if they didn't personally know him. Yeah, and I think that's important because nowadays, ah. um, with social media, you really do feel like, you know these artists yeah. and their music, you know, becomes a soundtrack to our lives. Mm -hmm. So when something like this happens, it really does feel like a loss for fans. Totally. And then uh, the toxicology reports, I feel like, were a turning point in the story. Yeah, for sure. Because they revealed that he actually had a, multiple substances in his system mm -hmm. um, when he died. Yeah. Uh, they specifically found cocaine, mm -hmm. uh, pink cocaine, benzodiazepine, mm -hmm. crack cocaine. Right. Plus, they found an improvised pipe for drug use in his room. And maybe before we go any further, we should maybe clarify what pink cocaine actually is. Because it's actually kind of a misleading name. Okay. It's not actually cocaine. Really? Um, It's a mixture of ecstasy. Wow. Ketamine caffeine. Huh. And a psychedelic called 2CB. Okay. Um, It's often found in party settings, hmm. but it can have some dangerous side effects. So it sounds like we're starting to see kind of a more complex picture emerge here. Yeah, definitely. It's clear that substance use played a role, mm -hmm. but there are still so many pieces of the puzzle to put together to really understand what happened. Let's talk a little bit about the events leading up to his death. Okay. About an hour before he died, hotel staff called the authorities. Right. Because they were concerned about his behavior. Uh -huh. And... One worker even said that they feared for his safety. Yeah. Which paints a very disturbing picture of what was happening yeah. in the room. And the timeline is really tight, too. Okay. There were only about seven minutes between that call to the authorities. Wow. And when they arrived and found his body in the courtyard. Oh, my gosh. That's so sad. Yeah. It's really heartbreaking how quickly it all happened. It really does seem like those initial reports, yeah. you know, of just a balcony fall. Yeah. We're really just telling a small part of the story. Right. There's a there's a much bigger and much sadder truth to uncover here. Yeah, definitely. And it's important to note that even after the toxicology results, mm -hmm. the investigation continued. Right. Uh, the police actually described Liam's hotel room as being in complete disarray. Really? Uh, with various drugs just scattered around. Wow. And they even interviewed a hotel employee who they suspected of supplying him with drugs. Oh, wow. Um, although no charges were ever filed. That's kind of disturbing to think about that that kind of access and enabling, you know. Yeah, definitely. I think it adds another layer of complexity to this already heartbreaking story. Yeah. And amidst all of this, there were also these really moving tributes mm -hmm. that were coming out from his family and friends. Yeah. His sisters, uh, Nicola and Ruth, right. shared some really beautiful messages. Yeah, their words were just so powerful. Yeah. They were calling him, you know, their best friend, an angel. Mm -hmm. And it really highlighted, I think, the personal loss yeah. that was felt by those who knew him best. Yeah, I think it gives us a glimpse of, you know, the real Liam, mm -hmm. the, the kind of person that he was beyond the fame. Yeah. Danielle Pizer, who was one of his former girlfriends, yeah. she also shared a message that really resonated with me. Okay. She mentioned that Liam had actually reached out to her. Wow. Recently. To express his happiness for her. Oh, wow. You know, she's starting a family and everything. That's really sweet. Yeah, it is. It's like even amidst, you know, his own struggles. Yeah. He was still genuinely happy for her. It really speaks to his character, I think. Yeah. That, that kind of thoughtfulness and empathy. And it wasn't just personal connections that were highlighted. You know, yeah. his former bandmates, they all shared their condolences. Of course. Um, Zayn Malik even 
postponed his U.S. tour dates oh. out of respect. Yeah. You can tell that even though they weren't making music together anymore. Right. That bond was still there mm -hmm. from their shared experiences. Your girlfriend, Kate Cassidy, and the mother of his child, Cheryl, mm -hmm. also expressed their profound loss. Right. Cheryl actually criticized the media yeah. for what she called abhorrent reporting around Liam's death. That brings up an important point, I think, mm -hmm. about the media's responsibility when reporting on things like this. Yeah. You know, the public has a right to know. Right. But there needs to be a balance yeah. with respecting the grieving family mm -hmm. and not sensationalizing the tragedy. So I think as we look at everything we've learned so far, yeah. it's clear that, you know, Liam's death was a devastating event mm -hmm. with far reaching consequences. For sure. But amidst the tragedy, yeah. his music and his legacy, mm -hmm. they continue to touch countless lives. And that's what we really want to focus on now. OK. You know, Liam's lasting impact on music and on his fans. Yeah. It's hard to imagine the music world without him. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. You know, his music really touched so many lives. It did. And his passing is just a profound loss for his fans. Yeah. And what's interesting to me is how, you, you know, oh. His songs seem to have resonated with people on such a personal level. Right. They provided comfort inspiration, a sense of community. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, his music was a constant. Right. You know, something they could turn to in good times and bad. Yeah. And that kind of connection is so powerful. Yeah. And it really speaks volumes, I think, about the legacy he leaves behind. And I think it's also interesting how his former bandmates have talked about him. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about his humor, his energy, mm. his genuine kindness. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like we're getting these glimpses of the real Liam, the person mm. behind the fame. And I think those glimpses are so important yeah. because they remind us that, mm -hmm. you know, behind every celebrity, behind every public figure, right. there's a human being mm. with their own struggles and complexities. Yeah. And Liam's story while tragic, can hopefully serve as a reminder to be kind mm -hmm. and offer support. Yeah. And to remember that we never really know right. what someone else is going through. It's a lot to process. It is. And it brings up some really, you know, difficult questions. Mm -hmm. How do we better support people who are struggling with addiction? Yeah. Especially those in the public eye. That's a tough one. Yeah. And how do we balance the public's right to know right. with respecting the privacy and dignity mm -hmm. of those involved. Those are questions that deserve serious consideration. Yeah. You know, Liam's story has sparked a conversation mm -hmm. and it's up to us to continue that conversation right. and to work towards creating a more compassionate and supportive world. This has been a heavy deep dive. It has. But I think we've learned a lot. We have. We've seen the dangers of substance abuse, mm -hmm. the pressures of fame, right? the importance of mental health awareness. Uh -huh. But we've also seen the incredible power of music yes. to connect people, yeah. offer solace, and to leave a lasting legacy. And I think that's what we need to hold on to. Yeah. You know, even in the face of tragedy, mm -hmm. there's always hope. Right. There's always the potential for change. Yeah. And there's always that enduring power of human connection. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive. It's been a pleasure. It's been emotional, but I hope it's been thought-provoking as well. I think so. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.